Well, we also got some news and notes over on SmackDown. It looks like Heyman and Lesnar are going to be splitting up here. We're advancing that storyline, but in a very real circumstance, Saturn is officially released and Meltzer would say it was no surprise. And apparently the decision was made while he was injured that they weren't going to bring him back. He would say the nature of his contract, which expires in January is that he's getting paid in full through January, but apparently paying a big lump sum for the release now which maybe gets the contract off the books quicker. We talked to Bruce years ago about when the radicals first jumped ship from WCW to the WWE. And he saw, of course, everybody believed there was a huge upside in Benoit. And he thought that Eddie Guerrero might could be the Hispanic Shawn Michaels, but Bruce specifically thought, man, Perry Saturn is a big dude with a great look. There's a lot of upside on our side of the fence for that guy. And it never really clicked. I mean, listen, he had some good matches and he made some chicken salad with things like moppy, but it never really got any momentum. Why do you think that was, was Vince, did Vince just not get it with, with, uh, Perry? I don't think he did. I don't think Vince did. I think, uh, I think Perry was, uh, couldn't get out of the shadow of Benoit and Eddie. Right. And, uh, so by comparison, uh, there is no comparison, uh, you know, so, but Perry was easy to work, pretty easy to work with. You know, we, you still got to deal with all the external, external things, Conrad, uh, you know, drug and alcohol abuse, uh, pain pills, all this shit. She just never goes away. Seemingly. I don't think it's quite as drastic today by any means as it was in that era. So, uh. And, I, and of course the talents will always have a, their excuse and some of them are just not excuses. They're reasons. You know, I got a bad back. I can't make my bookings. The same thing would go back to that first class airfare. You know, I, I, I upgraded Sean Waltman. Yeah. His agent was Barry Bloom. Who's my agent now in Jericho's and Kenny Omega. And Everybody's Harrison. yeah. Yeah. He's got and Mick. Uh, Old so, bird. uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, Perry just, it, he just barely missed. He just barely missed. And I don't never, I never did understand why Vince didn't have the confidence in Perry that others did seemingly. And it's just, a, it just didn't click. It just didn't, it didn't work. And that's unfortunate. Perry was a good guy. He's solid hand. No doubt about that. Well, let's talk about the show. Uh, here it is Madison square garden. It's still the garden. It's still special. And it's a critical success with the observer readers. 76.2% thumbs up. Uh, but as a reminder, the prior year survivor series was the final match between the, the whole invasion angle. So it's the the Alliance of WCW and ECW taking on the WWF for brand supremacy. So that did 450,000 buys, which you could argue should have been a lot higher than that, but. Boy, the invasion storyline was just bungled. But by this point, man, in 02, the WWE's reeling a little bit. This show, instead of doing 450,000 like it did in 01, did 340,000 buys. So we've managed to turn off over 100,000 paying customers in t- inside of 12 months. And it's not like we could say, well, the invasion angle was great creative. We all recognize it was less than but it was still 110,000 higher than this. Is this the ever dreaded cyclical line that we like to say, or is it more than that? Are fans this turned off by things like Katie Vick and hot lesbian action, et cetera, et cetera. I think the year ladder, I think, uh, we didn't have a lot of, we weren't building a lot of momentum, at least momentum in a positive way. If that makes any sense whatsoever, uh, it, it just bad creative. Gave the fans no big, strong reason to make it can't miss television. You know, the, during the attitude era, Monday night raw is can't miss TV. Everybody watched. Yeah. And now, uh, this scenario is a little bit different, but it's, if you just do the math, you can tell that we were not the basic fundamental thing of promotion. We were not providing the fans with what they wanted to see. And that's why all those folks did come back to buy this pay-per-view. They did, they were, some of them are probably disgusted. Some were probably disillusioned. Yeah. 
but nobody was flocking to this creative and saying, man, I got to watch this again. This is going to be great. Can't wait till next week. I don't think that was happening that often. Well, it is a legitimate sellout. There's 17,930 fans there. About 15,500 of them were paying fans. And it broke the all time gate record for pro wrestling in New York City. $1,250,580. It's the largest live gate for any pro wrestling show ever in North, Al- North America that was North Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't a WrestleMania. Think about that. Largest gate. In North American history for a non WrestleMania. So listen, we can poke holes and say, oh, they're down on pay-per-view and blah, blah, blah. But there's other metrics that you would measure your business. And man, if we're sold out at the garden and setting records, like not just for this building, not just for this market, but for North of freaking America, or as I said, Alabama, that's pretty strong, dude. Yeah, it is. And, uh, uh, it's like putting a band aid on a wound. That house took a lot of the heat off Yeah, for, for a lot of folks and, uh, gave a little bit of a surcease as Gordon Stoller used to say, uh, uh-uh. uh, huh. uh, and, uh, you know, it, it, it was a, it was a temporary feel good. It's like having taken medicine. It's going to work for a while, but then now what? And we need a new band aid. So that's kind of how I looked at that thing. It was a great success. It was cool as hell to see the garden packed it's, it, and to know that most of the tickets were actually sold and not given away. Yes. Uh, I thought that was kind of good. And so, but it was just, it was a, it was a temporary fix. The euphoria that that success created was much needed to say the least. Hey, Hey, it's Conrad Thompson here to tell you a little more about what adfreeshows.com is all about. Get early ad free access to more than a dozen of your favorite wrestling podcasts every single week, starting at just nine bucks. That's less than 20 cents an episode each month. And yes, you can listen to them all directly through Apple podcasts or your regular podcast apps. How easy is that? Ad free shows also has thousands of hours worth of bonus content and docu-series like title chase, Eric fires back conversations with Conrad and the insiders. Plus new series like the book with David Crockett, Monday mailbags with Mike Kyoto and Nick Patrick and a whole lot more. And you want to talk about early. You can't get any earlier than listening to the shows live. You can be a part of the live studio audience as we record the podcast. Plus ride shotgun alongside your favorite childhood heroes for live watch alongs, Q and A's and other interactive experiences every single month. Come on now, see for yourself what thousands of other wrestling fans from around the world have discovered that adfreeshows.com is the best value in wrestling. Check it out today. And Hey, when you do the first week is completely free Adfreeshows.com. <laughs> 